And so the story goes that um, Black Sam Bellamy, the scourge of the Caribbean, um, was kind of on the loose in the Caribbean, um, gathering and plundering. And he ended up having three ships with him. One of them included the Spanish galleon called the Widda. Um, and a, gal a galleon has a deep belly on it so that it can hold a lot of booty in the bottom. And then it has really long, a, a really long uh, body so that it goes pretty fast. And so during his travels, apparently, um, Black Sam met a lovely lady named Maria Hallett in Wellfleet on Cape Cod. And they became a thing. And so Maria Hallett worked in um, in a tavern called Sam Adams Tavern on the great island of Wellfleet. It's a tidal island that when the tide's out, you can walk out to it. And then when the tide comes back in, you need a boat. So this was a this was a bar that was known where a lot of the unsavory types would go to um, because they could walk out there. They could park their boats way out, get in and kind of hang out. So that was where he was on his way to pick up Maria from wherever she was slinging beer uh, there, probably. And a nor'easter blew in. It was just one of these April um, sudden storms that just uh, pummeled the the whole coast of Cape Cod and the ship basically sunk. So 144, I believe it was 144 pirates, including Black Sam Bellamy, went to their watery grave and three or four of them got away. And you'll see in a couple of my next pictures, besides it being at like two in the morning, pitch black, they were probably battling, you know, 60 foot waves. And then if you've ever been to Cape Cod and you know those giant dunes, the farther out on the Cape you get, they could be 200 feet dunes and having to try to scramble and claw your way up these dunes during a crazy storm. It's hard enough on a, you're not allowed on them now, but to get up and down some of these dune steps, it, it's you know hard enough on a nice day with, you know, a, with a patio chair. But, um, but these few pirates that made it to the top and didn't uh, drown in the um, shipwreck basically were hung as pirates and, and uh, executed anyway. So the story of the ship, uh, this ship full of gold and, and Madeira and uh, jewelry and all sorts of other things, just um, being at the bottom of the ocean right there, the story has just stuck around for 250 years. And a lot of people were like, oh, we've heard about this legend. It doesn't exist. Every so often, a silver coin of uh, some sort of a um, a silver uh, Spanish coin would uh, be found on the beach, but not much else. So you have um, in the 1980s, this gentleman, Barry Clifford, who um, grew up on the Cape, a little bit moneyed. Um, his parents' best friends were like Walter Cronkite and a bunch of other um, rubbing elbows with the Kennedys and stuff. So he. Um, he had the luxury of becoming a gentleman explorer and um, purchased an underwater um, archaeological ship with all the um, with all the the honing devices and radars. And he was convinced there was there was a treasure down there somewhere. And he spent a lot of his young adult life, you know, learning to scuba dive, learning underwater archaeology, but never academically or formally. And so when he started this search, he got poo-pooed by, you know, the academics, the the state archaeologists, like, oh, it's not out there. Unless you find something that says the Widda, we'll never believe anything you find is from the Widda. And so despite all of this, uh, the naysayers, he went out and for four years, I believe, searched every summer, just searched for this treasure. And JFK Jr. went with him one or two summers. And so he created this um, expedition, this team that kind of broke up and they found like a, I don't know if it's a three mile radius off the coast of Wellfleet um, to start digging, to like just turn up the silt and see if there was um, anything underneath the layer of the, the, you know, 200 layers of sand that settled. And sure enough, over the first three years, they started finding really big blocks of gold bullion. They started finding jewelry. They started finding cannons, clothing that was leather, shoes, um, all sorts of stuff that would have came from a ship. Um, the interesting thing about this is that most of these metal items were concreted. And if you see this 
bell over here. Um, what looks like concrete around it is actually the salt water and the salt collecting to create this um, uh, this layer of, I guess, just encase it in salt. And so in order to get this um, concrete is what it's referred to technically off, um, these items are exposed to tiny little electrodes that just kind of tap at it. It's in this salt water um, solution with electrodes kind of hitting it and just gently chipping away at it and until it's completely uncovered. And so in the museum that is that used to be in Provincetown, you could go back in the lab and see all of these different items at different states of uh, being deconcreted and fascinating, fascinating thing. But the state of Massachusetts and all like the archaeological societies um, would not recognize this wreck as the Witta unless there was some smoking gun. And typically the galleys would have a wood slat across the boat uh, that would say, you know, the galley, the Witta galley. But over 200 years, the wood and stuff rots and just, you know, dissipates in the ocean. Sure enough, they bring up what looks like a bell. And after it's being concreted, you can see right here, it says the Witta galley 1717 on it. And it was like, you couldn't have asked for any more of a smoking gun than that. And so he's like, pew, pew, I got the Witta. So he basically became um, uh, the owner of the treasure in this, whatever this allotted area was, this three three square mile radius. And the, the expedition is still going on to this day and they're still bringing stuff up. And if you go to the Witta Museum in West Yarmouth, which is where it just moved to a couple years ago, it's awesome. It's not like your hokey, um, you know, wax museum of pirates. It really is one of these places that redefines what piracy was like in the 18th century and what life aboard a pirate ship might have been like. There's these interpretive exhibits that show what how they dealt with medicine and medical problems with all kinds of medical um, tools. There's clothing. There's some things that, you know, are in partial, uh, partially intact that, you know, has little drawings completing it. So you can see a whole picture of what life was like all aboard the ship. Um, and uh, the Widow has recently moved from a place in Provincetown on the pier to what was the old aquarium. So if it looks like an aquarium, it's the Widow Museum. And it's totally worth a look as an adult as well as a child.